about the RTX 50 series leaks? HDMI 2.2 is on its way, and hey, if you've got NVIDIA's app installed, it might murder your frame rate. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your bright host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Tuesday, December 17th, 2024. And I wanna remind you that we do have our PC giveaway going on this week over on Twitch. It's gonna be taking place on the 19th. We're gonna be drawing the winner. I would pick up the computer, except for I had surgery on Friday, so I'm not gonna do that for at risk of uh, hurting myself. So uh, it's a Thermaltake Tower 600. It's got a 9950X, a 4080 Super. It's a great little PC. Join us over on Twitch. You can watch the stream now to enter or you can uh, just pop in on the 19th. We'd love to have you there. And if you're wondering, what are the next giveaways going to look like, Brett, with the 50 series and all of that? Well, we're getting more details coming out by the day. I wasn't able to talk about the Game Awards in Friday's episode of Hot News because it happened after we recorded, but during the Game Awards, The Witcher 4 got shown off, and the very beginning of it shows that it's a cinematic trailer pre-rendered in Unreal Engine 5 on an unannounced NVIDIA GeForce RTX GPU. That was... Honestly, one of the more exciting parts of the Game Awards to see that they unofficially showed off the RTX 50 series, but there's been more and more leaks with regards to these GPUs that we're expecting to be announced in January. We obviously have a lot of details from different companies like Zotac putting things out there, as well as more uh, behind the scenes leaks. But for a lot of people who will want to be disappointed in NVIDIA, the RTX 5060 is expected to only have eight gigabytes of VRAM. However, the 5090 is expected to go up to 32 gigabytes. And then we also have details of everything in between. Allegedly, the 5060 Ti is going to have 16 gigabytes, and so will essentially every other card in the lineup besides the 5070. And the reason that will have less is because of its memory interface, which requires it to have a different amount of VRAM. So instead of them giving it more, they give it less. So it's 12 gigabytes, and it looks like the 5060 Ti is going to be that VRAM sweet spot that NVIDIA wants to hit. Obviously, pricing is going to be weird. Are they going to bring it in at that $500 price point that the 4060 Ti 16 gig has been in. If they do, it's going to make it a very difficult proposition, especially with what we're expecting AMD to release this coming January. Obviously, for a lot of people, this is incredibly disappointing not getting more than 16 gigabytes on the 5080, which three generations ago would have been the flagship card. Need I remind you, the 3090 was the first 90 class card to come out. So the 5090 being the flagship is kind of weird, especially when that's going to cost well over 1500 bucks. And then we'll have a lot of VRAM, but that's going to be exclusive to the people who have a lot of disposable income. So it's a it's a strange situation going on with the GPUs. Obviously, you have things like Intel's B580 with 12 gigabytes of VRAM at the $250 price point, making it so that that conversation is going to come up more and more, especially with the launches. We don't have the full lineup of what AMD is going to do with the 8600, which is likely going to compete with the 5060. We're not exactly sure how much VRAM that will have. I would expect it to be between 12 and 16 gigs. But it's not clear that uh, NVIDIA is the only one who is making uh, the low VR amounts happen just yet. It could be AMD, Team Red as well. We'll keep you updated as all of that happens. But in case you are looking for a PC with a new GPU, you should definitely check out today's video sponsor, Falcon Northwest. They obviously haven't confirmed anything about the 50 series. We're just talking about that separately. But Falcon Northwest does keep all their PCs updated. So if there happens to be a 50 series launch, you probably can expect it to pop its way into one of Falcon Northwest's many pre-belts. And they've been around for many, many moons, many, many GPU launches. They've been around for over 30 years. They are older than everybody on the UFD tech team besides me. They've been in this industry since 1992. They're independently owned and run by their founder. And the way you stay in business that long in the PC industry is by providing phenomenal customer service. They take that seriously, making sure that they have three-year warranties. The first year, you have overnight service, which is standard in case there's an issue with your PC that they can't diagnose remotely. And we've had great experiences with all of the Falcon Northwest PCs that have come through the office. We've We've given away their Tiki, we've given away their Fragbox, and I personally run their Talon at home as my main gaming system. In fact, I used it all weekend long when I was recovering from my surgery and decided to just sit in a chair and stream some video games. That was all done on the Falcon Northwest Talon with Reese's face on it. The Talon's the mid-tower, the Fragbox is the more portable, LAN-oriented case, and the Tiki 
is the smallest micro tower, which all of these can pack a lot of hardware into them, especially because Falcon Northwest custom designs their chassis and makes it so that the cooling and everything for these computers are tuned directly to the hardware that's in there. And they can also customize it to you directly, offering printing services directly to the outside of the computer. You can see that all of the giveaway prizes that we've had have been tremendously colorful. And my one that I have at home is again, covered in Reese's face. But Falcon Northwest isn't just for gamers. They also take business very seriously as well for content creation, game development, and anything that you're gonna need a ton of horsepower for with their Threadripper workstation being named as one of PC Mag's best products of 2024. Falcon Northwest has been in the industry for a while. They support their customers. They make sure that everything's covered. And when we have things like Intel's instability issues, they're at the front lines diagnosing, making sure that they have answers for their customers before even a company like Intel will. So in case you wanna check out the Falcon Northwest pre-builds down below in the video description, you should click that down there. The Talent, the Fragbox, the Tiki, one of their workstations, you can't go wrong with Falcon Northwest. Big thanks to them for sponsoring today's video. But one of the things Falcon Northwest doesn't sell is handhelds. And we're expecting Lenovo to have a lot of those coming in at CES. We're getting more details about the Lenovo Legion Go 2. It's allegedly gonna have a few key upgrades going from the Z1 Extreme to the Z2 Extreme, but also having an OLED screen, which is honestly incredible. One of the best things about the Legion Go currently is its 144 hertz screen, the highest refresh rate out there. And I believe it's 2560 by 1600. So it's pixel per inch is also incredibly high. Adding OLED into that would make it incredible. Mine is sitting on the shelf right there, but I really like it. It's one of my favorite handhelds that has come out. It does do things differently with its detachable mouse Joy-Con uh, gaming setup. It's one of the neater features that we really liked in our review of the Legion Go, and that's gonna be kept on the Legion Go too. But we're also expecting the Legion Go S to come out, and there's been even more design leaks of this handheld console. It's supposed to have the Z2 chip coming in with 120 hertz refresh rate, be roughly the same size as the regular Legion Go, but without the detachable controllers. And one of the more interesting parts is that it does have a Steam button in the top left. Now, it's not clear what this is going to be used for. There's been speculation that this could make it a SteamOS handheld, Lenovo being one of the first companies outside of Valve to actually run SteamOS on their handhelds, or it could potentially just be something like a big picture launcher and just be a usable feature and it's still a Windows gaming handheld. That's not quite clear. This is slightly different than the Legion Go 2, which does not have this button based on the leaks that we've seen. So it's only the Legion Go S that is having this. I would personally love it if this was a SteamOS machine, but I can also accept it if it is just another Windows handheld. And we're getting another standard of HDMI. According to reports, HDMI 2.2 is set to debut at CES in January in just a few weeks. And we don't really have a whole lot of confirmed details of what this will mean, but we're expecting potentially this is gonna be on the upcoming series of graphics cards, the 50 series and the RX 8000 series from AMD. And a lot of the reports are indicating that it's gonna be on par with what DisplayPort offers, which can mean that it has super high refresh rate at 8K, potentially allowing you to go up to 120 Hertz without compression and 10K 60 Hertz without compression. Currently, HD HDMI 2.1 can achieve those, but only with display stream compression. So it'll allow for more uncompressed throughput. It's not quite clear if it's gonna go up to 80 gigabits per second, like DisplayPort does. HDMI 2.1 currently only goes up to 48 gigabits, but HDMI 2.2 expected to be announced in a few weeks. We'll make sure to report more on that once we have those details. And Reese has some deal tales to give you. Yo, welcome back to UFT Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals on the internet. As you can see, I'm not my usual place. I'm at my parents visiting for the holidays and I currently have no power and I haven't had power for the last 12 hours. So this is gonna be a bit of a speed run episode to get through some deals while I still have remaining power. Shouts out EcoFlow for literally keeping the lights on. But hey, let's jump into it because first up we have these Arctic P14 Max 140 millimeter PWM case fans going for only $10.99, making it $7 off. And then second, Secondly and lastly, we have this Alienware 27 inch 1440p 165 hertz IPS gaming monitor going for only $229.99, making it $170 off. And hey, with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm handing off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Well, Reese, here's the deal on the RX 8000 series. We don't know a whole lot just yet, but there are popping ups happening that are popping up. The Power Color Reaper Edition is expected to be an RX 8000 series exclusive coming in with the debut. There's supposed to be four Reaper cards with multiple versions.
versions for the different variants that are going out. And GPU-Z adding support for Navi 48, which is supposed to be one of the GPUs that's gonna be in RX 8000. So that's kind of where we're at with AMD's next generation of GPUs. We're obviously talking about the 50 series, 8000 series, but let's talk about Strix Halo, the big bad boy APU that's expected to get announced at CES. We finally got our first CPU benchmark out of this. We've already seen the 8060S GPU be benchmarked, and it looks like it's performing between a 4060 and a 4070 mobile, which is impressive for integrated graphics. But the CPU in the Strix Halo chip is even more impressive, especially with it being included in the ROG Flow Z13. I forgot that this thing existed, and when I was talking last week about the Strix Halo chips, I was like, oh, I'd love to have it in some form of a handheld that you could plug in and wouldn't get great battery life. But this is a great solution to that. It's a very portable form factor. I actually might pick one of these up if it includes a Strix Halo chip, like it's indicating. But the CPU benchmarks on this is incredible. It's 16 cores of Zen 5 CPU on that AI Max Plus. 395, this isn't the AI Max Plus Pro. That's a slightly different chip. This is this is the non-pro version, but it's still got the, the Max Plus. Anyways, it beats out the 7945HX3D that AMD had as their previous mobile flagship CPU by quite a considerable margin, at least in this one synthetic benchmark that's out. Obviously, we have to wait for gaming benchmarks to come out, but that CPU performance likely will only matter if you have a higher end dedicated GPU, not the integrated GPU, but regardless, the AI Max Plus 395 is looking like it's gonna be a whopper of a chip both in the CPU department and the GPU department. And Nvidia has been whopping your frame rate in case you've been installing the new Nvidia app, which fun fact became a necessity because they stopped updating GeForce Experience with new drivers and they're trying to force people over the, to their Nvidia app. And reports are coming out that it can tank your FPS by as much as 15%. Now I'm gonna quote Tom's Hardware's report on this because this is the most concise uh, details that I can find on this issue right now, but I've scoured the internet trying to find out exactly what's going on in multiple departments. And this has been reported by a lot of people having this issue, 15% performance loss in various different video games because they have the new Nvidia app installed. So Tom's Hardware goes through a bunch of different games showing that with the app, without the app, that without the app is performing considerably better in a bunch of different games at basically every resolution. And some of the reports that I've seen is that this can be fixed if you uninstall and reinstall the app, but then I've also read reports where people have said that they've done that, they've gotten their performance back, and then just a few hours later, the performance hit does indeed turn back on and they lose FPS. There's also been reports that this could potentially be because of the NVIDIA overlay, which Tom's Hardware tested all of their GPUs with the overlay activated, but on that same token, I've also seen reports where people have said that without the NVIDIA overlay, they've had that turned off, they made sure it wasn't enabled. They also still had the performance penalty. So it appears that there's some weird quirk bug issue going on with the NVIDIA app, causing this 15% FPS loss in a bunch of different games. NVIDIA hasn't commented on this as of the time of recording, but my guess is they're fully aware of it. NVIDIA's software division is very robust. I would likely expect that there's gonna be an update fixing this within the next few days. So in case you notice your PC is running slower than it was previously, and you just got on the NVIDIA app, maybe uninstall it for the time being, manually install the drivers instead of relying on an app to do it for you and uh, get better FPS that way. So that's that's the way to fix things. And speaking of getting fixed, my week went, was, uh, was wild. So I'm gonna read the, the comments that you guys left on Friday. But before I do, I just wanna uh, talk about a new feature that YouTube's bringing out for comment responses. And that is they're gonna allow creators to give voice replies to comments down below. Now this is currently only in testing and it's only available for creators on their own channel, on their own videos. We can only reply to you guys with audio and it is currently only on the iOS app, not the Android app. And I personally don't even have access to this as of yet, but it's an interesting feature that YouTube appears to be trying out and you can do a text reply to the audio reply that a creator does to you. I will just include it baked in at the end of the video because you know we've been doing comment response for a while. So uh, Brett's already figured this out, but YouTube's rolling it out for other creators in case they want to interact with you more personably. But speaking of uh, interaction, a lot of you noticed that the timestamps on Friday's episode were messed up and that was my fault. We actually put a sponsor in on Friday who I thought was going to approve their ad to go in and then they didn't. So we had to remove it at the last second, but because I had my surgery that 
that morning. I didn't have time to go back and do the timestamps. So huge shout out to no one pi five or for doing the timestamps and getting the correct ones in there. Uh, apologies. It was just a, a multitude of factors that led to everything being wrong. It's mostly my fault. I will try to make sure that things go better and more smoothly in the future. Speaking of the future, Rain saying 50, 60 might be priced around $250. That's a good joke. A around $300 is number one, what I communicated, which is around $250. Regardless, uh, a lot of people made that assumption of the 4060 as well, saying there's no way it's gonna be around $300. And then it was, the 4060 was cheaper than the 3060 by, I believe it was uh, 30 bucks. So the Nvidia is capable of lowering the price. They have done it. Obviously, a lot of people would argue that that came with the performance penalty and that the 4060 is more like a 4050, et cetera, et cetera. But the 60 class card coming in at 299, is currently where we are. Nvidia doesn't always raise the price every single generation. You can have your negativity bias towards Nvidia on that. I'm just trying to talk about the details of what actually is available on the market right now. And then Jay Carmen saying, Intel's quirks and features. You were really channeling your inner Doug DeMuro there, weren't you? That's, that was the reference I was making. Yes, I have uh, I've enjoyed a few uh, Doug DeMuro videos in my day. And then Z-String saying, going to go flip the snip. What? I, I looked up euphemisms for getting a vasectomy and that was the funniest one I found. So that's what I went with. I am recovering okay. It's been, it was a long weekend of streaming, just kind of relaxing, not doing anything. I'm out of the house right now, trying to just take it easy. I wasn't in the office for very much today, just really here to film, which doesn't involve a lot of physical effort. I'm not picking up the Thermal Take Tower 600, which has a 9950X and a 4080 Super, number one, because it's heavy, number two. Uh, I want to remind you that we do have that giveaway going on this Thursday, so we'd love to have you over on our Twitch streams where you can potentially enter and win that prize, uh, twitch.tv forward slash UFD Tech. We'd love to have you there, and I would love for me to continue recovering. So I'm gonna end this episode of Hot News and go back to my house and rip and feel better and uh, probably put some ice on it. See you tomorrow.